I can move on to introduce our speaker today, Pavel Jelinek. So for those of you who, who are not familiar with, with him, uh, it's a very brief introduction. So he, he got his PhD in 2001 at the Czech Technical University, working on modeling uh, crystal growth of, of two six semiconductors. Uh, after that, he, he joined the group of uh, Professor Fernando Flores Sintas at the Universidad de Autonoma de Madrid as a postdoc between 2001 and 2005. Uh, then he returned to Czech, and since 2009, he's been the group leader of the NanoSurf Laboratory at the Institute of Physics in Prague. And, and now he's also holds an associated professor position at the Palaski University in Olomouc. Um, I think many of you are familiar with Pavel. He's been involved with many key developments, and especially high resolution AFM imaging. There's, Things like chemical identification of individual surface atoms using AFM, and also understanding the mechanism of higher resolution imaging with this molecule modified things, um, and so on. There are many, many, many papers over the years. At the moment, Pavel's group is focusing on design, synthesis, and characterization of low dimensional molecular nanostructures to realize new physical and chemical phenomena at the atomic scale. And, and there are many very exciting results combining on surface chemistry with high resolution scanning probe imaging. And I think we will hear more along these lines today. So the title of Pavel's talk is 1D molecular chains with exotic quantum properties. And with that, we very much look forward to, to your talk, please. Okay, so first of all, Peter and Jose for, for the invitation. It's really a pleasure to talk here. Uh, in this already not very well known series. So as, as Peter already mentioned, I'm going to talk about these one dimensional molecular chains and, and I will hope convince you that there is some kind of exotism in, in this quantum state. So we can design something which, which uh, is kind of new or uh, we can call it quantum. Okay, to, to start with this. Okay, so this is the introduction of uh, our outline of my talk. First of all, I will mention briefly why we are interested in one dimensional systems and a little bit to introduce our strategy and how, how to deal with this. And in the first part of my talk, I'm going to talk about the topology P conjugation and sort of like bond length, uh, bond length alternation. And I would like to somehow make a bridge between two words. Like the one is this topological band structure and the other one is what is called the P conjugation. So it means like connection to chemistry and physics. And in the, uh, the second part of, that, of my talk, I'm going to talk about some concerted proton tunneling motion in one dimensional systems and some kind of uh, how these quantum nuclear effects may, may have an impact on, on the material properties of these chains. OK, to start with introduction. So I will start with like general introduction, why we should take care about two dimensional systems so in principle, now these days, there is a lot of focus on, on 2D materials. And I think that the invention of or introduction of 2D materials was mostly one of the part of the story was uh, that, that basically moving from 3D to 2D, we reduce the dimensionality and then brings more like electron-electron correlation or quasi-particle correlation. However, when we go from 2D to 1D, actually, it seems at least very, uh, theoretically, it has been predicted that basically uh, that this kind of quasi-particle interactions is, it's enhanced even furthermore, and we can really start to meet some some very strange uh, state of matter. But the first, uh, I would like to mention just in in a in very simple like single electron picture theory, you can already start to see this manifestation of one-dimensional system. It's it's a divergence of susceptibility of the electrons in, in 1D, and this gives rise basically this kind of instability on, on the Fermi level, <clears throat> which has uh, a lot of, and just uh, it may have very strong impact on the material properties. Like uh, so, it means that in principle, one-dimensional metallic system they should not be should not be stable, and this is basically part of my story of the uh, of uh, today. So. Again, now let's let's do, look at this in more, let's say, more relaxed way. And, and actually, you, you can already appreciate that these one-dimensional systems uh, every day when you when you drive on the highway or, or on some road, and then you will get a traffic jam. So basically, this is the direct manifestation of one-dimensionality of, of the system because you cannot avoid this kind of traffic. And, and what you will find is 
formation of so, so many like uh, shock waves, etc., etc. And I think there is some common, uh, there is some common uh, things to, to to talk about with electrons in one D and and and, and, uh, and cars on the high. Beam. Of course, when, when we talk about this one-dimensional system, I mean, the success of 2D was basically that there was a, there was a plenty of material, 2D materials here, especially graphene, which are stable, we, we can find them in, in the nature. However, a realization of this one-dimensional system is a little bit more tricky, no? because the, I mean, basically, these one-dimensional objects are not so frequent as, as graphene. But with, uh, with a progress in high technology, basically, these days, we can prepare uh, these quantum wires by nanolithography, we can also design some 2D material with domain properties. Carbon nanotubes are also a very good example. All even those very interesting bulk materials with some inherent internal 1D order, they can also show very interesting material properties as a as high DC. But in, in this talk, I'm going to focus on what are called the conductive polymers or the polymers basically which are subject or they have been subject of strong uh, research in chemistry around uh, the, in the last century, the end of last century, was basically this came up with this quant uh, conductive polymer. So, uh, and but of course now, if you, if you look at these conductive polymers like 1D materials, uh, this is typical picture which you get. So basically, when the people talked about the conductive polymers, they they used to study the transport in in some let's say assemblies of of, of polymers. So it means we are not able to access single single polymer. Uh, basically, this 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 is example of transmission electron microscopy show one of these highly conductive polymers. But of course, to for for some better understanding, it will be really great if we basically can work with just single single polymer and, and measure, for example, the transport through single wire. And of course, this is not uh, this is not easy task. So what what we have been basically. Uh, or we try approach uh, this, this solve this problem is, is the combination of three techniques. So the first one is this on surface chemistry, and then uh, where we build up uh, by purpose the, the chains on, on the surface. The second one will be to use this high resolution imaging where you can get uh, electronic structure, you can get the chemical structure, etc. etc. And finally, optionally, you can also use the SPM tape to pick up these polymers once you synthesize this on the surface and measure the transport just through the single polymer. I'm not going to touch this, but that will, uh, I think, in this talk, but it's also important part of, of, of the story behind all this. Okay, so just very brief introduction of the on-surface uh, on chemistry. I think this is very active field where basically people investigating uh, the molecules, they put them on the surface, they anneal them or they uh, shine light on them. And what they what the, what the aim is is to form the, con, uh, the, the covalent polymers or covalent 1D and 2D structures. And that actually there are many, many active groups. And actually, this, this seminal paper comes from the group of Leonard they where they for the first time they've shown actually the strategy used this Ullman coupling to create the covalent linked uh, uh, objects of molecules. And, and with the same time, uh, we can use this high resolution imaging, which also had a lot of progress last year. Uh, this uh, a couple of seminal papers from uh, Demirov, uh, Leogoros, and, and Wilson Hogan, where they have actually shown that this kind of uh, unprecedented spatial resolution of planar molecules on surfaces can be achieved by, by scanning uh, tunneling microscopy. And I think that these days we have also very good, good understanding what is the imaging behind and this. Is actually or the mechanism, and this this allows us to 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 get beyond the imaging and get more like also some material properties like electro like uh, electrostatic potential, space state, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And finally, I mentioned that again there was a seminal uh, paper from from a Leonard Hill, uh, group where they have shown actually the idea to to grow uh, molecular chains on the surface, and then you can pick them up. That was done with the STM setup, and you can measure actually the transport. And I think these days, actually, the, 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 the machines, the commercial machines, they already uh, enable us to combine atomic force microscopy and scanning tunneling microscopy. Is that basically now you can you can uh, study very complex, you can get very complex picture not only about the transport properties but also about the mechanical response. So at the same time, you can measure basically the frequency shift. So you see 
how the individual units on the chains are, are, are lifted from the surface. So you can count very precisely how many units are uh, already in suspended chain, and then you can measure the DIDD at a certain point, the frequency shift dissipation. So principle, you can get very, very complex idea of what's, what's going on here. Okay, so first, uh, I'm going to start with this um, uh, talk about this uh, topological edge state, and I would like to say that basically this work was done in strong collaboration with, with David Esicha from India and uh, Nazario Martin, who provide the molecules, and these basically introduce us to this to this work of this uh, this asin uh, rigid uh, polymers. So when, when we start uh, from the chemical point of view, basically we're gonna talk about polyaromatic molecules. So these are planar molecules made of the carbon or benzene uh, units. And it, it, it's known very well known in, in the chemistry where you have this kind of arrangement of carbon skeleton. It, 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 it has it undergoes some, let's say transition and, and you see that you have so-called P conjugation. So it means alternation of simple and double bonds. And for example, in case of ethylene, which is the polyacetylene, which is the special case, you can find actually that you have the iso isomer of the same energy. So basically, you can change this alternation of simple double double simple, and these are equivalent. Okay, but in principle, when you go to the skinoid state, uh, typically you you deal with this kind of or again competition. So it means basically alternation of the same bond length or you go with skinoid structure. And that's basically this, this molecule, which is called Byzantine. It's a nice example, because that, that's somehow uh, interesting to see what, what resonance we will get. But a little bit going back to this one-dimensional system, which can be then extended also to this 2D, is what, what was the discovery of the Pyros in his book, basically when he came up with very important, very peculiar results, and demonstrating that actually in this one-dimensional chains, metallic chains, this one, one half link, uh, basically, you, you never will get metallic states, and instead the system uh, prefers uh, to undergo so-called dimerization of this pyrose transition, opening the band gap in the, in the cost of distortion of, of this molecule, of these atomic chains. Okay, so with that, basically, uh, these polyaromatic molecules, they are very interesting because they basically there is a competition in general because we can now adapt this uh, 1D pyrose argument to 2D. And basically what you can find out that there is a strong competition uh, how to reach the, the ground state about the electron phonon interaction and electron electron interaction which finally will decide what the resonance either this for example here aromatic or kinoid is is the ground state and of course in the in the real picture the ground state will be always combined by some linear combination of these two with maybe the majority of, of contribution of the one of, of these resonances okay and importantly, uh, what also people in, in the polymers, they, dis they discovered already, or oh, it's known, that if you go from the skinoidus R2 aromatic structure, so one of the driving or signature of this, or accompanying effect of this, is that actually the homo lumo, they will swap. Okay, so for example, what has been lumo here, when you transfer the system to, to the skinoid structure, structure, it becomes uh, lumo, and vice versa. So there is this like crossing of two levels, and that's, that's kind of known in this polymer physics or uh, chemistry. So now how this touch to topology, and I think that was already introduced many times here in this colloquia, it's called SSH model, this Sun Schrieffer Hagen model, which is very, which is very simple model, which which basically somehow uh, somehow connects the connects basically uh, different kind of topology. So this model, I will just go very briefly through that. So there is an alternation of single and double bonds here. And that's probably this, this was inspired by this polyacetylene. And, and the beauty of this model is that actually it's very simple, and you can write uh, down the simple equation, very of tie binding equation, where you take into account this on site and then just the hoppings, which change according to, to the double of, 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 of simple bond. And, and you can you can basically solve it by analytically. So it's, it's this analytical solution, which is depending on the K. The interesting thing is that if you start to change this hoping one, T1 and T2, it, and you if you keep the same ratio, basically, if you just look at the at the band structure, you will not recognize any difference. So basically, from point of view of, of, of this classical band structure theory, basically, it doesn't matter if T1 is bigger than T2 or T2 bigger than T1. The band gap which you're opening is, is ratio, 
but in principle, if I exchange but, uh, these two quantities, the magnitude of these two quantities, but keeping uh, basically the same ratio, the band structure looks exactly the same. And one more notice, if these two guys, they will be equal, the whole thing T1 and T2, you will get to this metallic state, which basically will be big back again to this kind of like cumulin-like uh, model where I have no modeling alternation. However, with help of this, let's say, introduction of, of very phase or, or topology, uh, now we can understand that basically these two band structures, there is a slight difference, and well, slight, there is a big difference basically in, in, uh, in the outcome, and that's related to the topology. So one of them is a trivial, topologically trivial, and other one is topologically non-trivial. And you can say, okay, this is just, uh, this is just kind of, uh, this is just kind of numeric or, or mathematics, but in principle, indeed, we can basically recognize this difference or appreciate this difference if we work with the, with the finite system. And we, we see that uh, this topologically trivial, there will be basically no edge states and topologically non-trivial, there will be edge states. And this can be actually, again, very, very naturally rationalized by this argument of dimerization model or limit of the dimerization. Then I see that in topologically non-trivial system, I will start to see two unpaired electrons at, at the end, which are basically the origin of the zero edge mode. Okay, so what is now we can see that, that basically you, you can have this very simple model where you can go from topologically trivial to topologically non trivial. And what is what is important? So if I go close to the uh, to this phase transition, by definition, I should see that the net gap is closing. If I'm in topologically non trivial system, I should start to observe two edge state. And of course, uh, what, what you already st can start to see from the SSH model that this kind of bottling alternation uh, is, is kind of important and, and, and there will be uh, accompanied by the swap of, of the orbitals. So uh, this, these are the, so now we want to look at in something real. So, so we are talking at this, uh, this kind of polymers. So this is asyn polymers which are bridged by by this ethylene unit, and now the question is what the resonance it will be. Okay, so I have uh, two options how to write this resonance. It's some reasonable options. Uh, I can see that the first one will be more like this kinoid part will be propagated on the central benzene, and then I will have something like cumulin line structure. But that would result to uh, edge state appearing two radicals in terms of chemistry. On the other hand, I can go to something which will be closed shell where I have a, let's say, aromatic resonance here with this ethanolic bridge uh, molecule in between. So, so this is uh, it's also instructive to look at how basically the band gap will be evolving if I look just to the monomer. So it means I will, uh, I'm talking about the benzene, anthracene, pentacene, etc. And this kind of range, what I will find is that in case of monomer, there will be continuous decreasing of the band gap. On the other hand, if I do calculations for, for this kind of uh, ethylene bridge molecules, I will start to see that the polymer band gap it behaves slightly differently. So I'm, I'm decreasing the band gap by definition because I have connected system in this respect to the moni uh, monomer. But then when I start to like uh, increasing these AC units, I will see that the band gap is closing and then reopening again. And, I, uh, and, and basically I will see that this is somehow related to to this kind of um, uh, change of topology, okay, and that that could be underst understood on 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 time binding level, or it could be also understood on the level of of DFT, and indeed that that's what you see here. So the calculation really predict when you go from this anthracene to pentacene that there should be some change in 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 the, in the band gap and also in the in the closing band gap, and there should be also opening uh, the, the phase transition. And actually, in tie binding, when you choose somehow randomly these, these hoppings, you can actually reach by, def by default this, this metallic state. But this, of course, it's because of, of the, of the uh, lack of, of uh, relaxation of the system. But on the other hand, with the ZAC, again, you can calculate the ZAC phase, and you will see that this, this transition here is really a topological one. You can do also the FT, so finding chains, and what you will find is that if you if you do this these short chains like benzene anthracene, so these are already density of states of the polymer calculated with DFT, non uh, non uh, spin polarized. What you will find that that uh, in case of this anthracene chain there is a band gap. However, and and there is basically if you look at these, these states here, they are they are delocalized everywhere. On the other hand, when I go to this pentacene unit and I now optimize everything to a certain length. 
I will start to see that I, uh, in these non-spin non polarized uh, systems, I will start to see some uh, space which is just in the middle of, of, of the band gap and which is strongly localized on, on one of these of these states, on, on one of these edges. Okay. So now let's let's go to 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 some real because that was just simple theoretical uh, involvement and that's basically uh, where the Nazario Martin provide these molecules with David uh, they uh, propose this experiment that basically you have these these molecules which are uh, equipped this by four bromines and using this Ullmann coupling when you put it on the surface uh, supposedly you, you you make this uh, breakage of, of of bromine or the halogenation you pay the tetra radical and and indeed this this tetra radical is able to 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 start to grow uh, this uh, one dimensional chains. Okay, and then you can resolve them with AFM. Uh, you, that you see that also you can move them on, on the surface, so they are quite quite mobile. And nice thing is that you can really uh, uh, grow very, very long extended extended chains up to 100 nanometers, even longer. So far, so good. But then, I mean, uh, it's it's instructive to look at basically comparison as was predicted by theory that basically you have, you have this. Uh, anthracene or pentacene unit. And indeed, if you compare these two things, in case of, of, of anthracene, we do not observe any edge state. On the other hand, when we do, when we grow this, this, uh, uh, this pentacene polymers using very similar precursor on gold surface, what you will find indeed that at the end, where you have this terminated result and a defect terminated polymer, you can realize that there is, there is actually some state which appears in uh, in and the edge, okay. So with that, basically, we, we I think this is nice confirmation that uh, that basically there is a, some phase transition here, which basically uh, can be also let's say from chemical point of view can be also demonstrated nicely using this high resolution AFM imaging because if you look at so what what we see in the FD is when you go from this. Let's say topologically trivial to topologically non-trivial. You can also see that that uh, the, the geometry somehow goes from more this this aromatic to the kinoid, and also here uh, we see that actually bond length alternation is changing. We are not going to real coumarin, okay? It's not that we will have like real three equal bonds here, but what you will see is that actually here this this bond this triple bond is kind of debilitated and and, and it's large. And this could be also nicely seen in the FT calculation where the density, the electron density on this triple bond is diminishing. So this is like uh, total electron density calculated from BFT for the anthracene and, 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 and pentacene. And you see basically that, that here this strong signature of triple bond uh, kind of disappears. So it's, the density is more equal. So it means when we come with the CO tip, then in case of anthracene, you see this, this bright spot, which always has been recognized as a signature of triple bond. But however, in, in the case of, uh, of pentacene, you see that this, the signature of triple bond is, is diminishing. And you can also look in this Laplace filter and look at a little bit. And uh, here you need more, more like uh, be more caution about any, any, any artifacts of this analysis. But in principle, you can also see some signature that is aromatic to, to kinoid structure on the benzene uh, changing. OK. One more important thing is that uh, I, already, uh, I should mention, and uh, I mentioned already, is that basically this transition between aromatic and kinoid in, in chemistry, basically it's accompanied by the change of or swap or crossing level of these frontiers orbitals. And if you look in details, actually, this is the anthracene, like uh, this valence and conduction bands, and this is the pentacene. And actually, if you look at it carefully, you will find out that indeed there is a uh, this uh, this this homo or this, sorry this lumo in in anthracene has localized states or has a signature like here and if you look in the pentacene actually you find the same symmetry here and vice versa so with that basically you see that there is a, some signature of, of of this space transition and indeed if you do DFT calculation you can find the same trend actually in this k point where which will, where there is a band gap this direct band gap so you see that these two uh, orbitals they change. And importantly, what you will find is that uh, if you look in details on the character of, of this of this state here, you will find that in case of uh, of anthracene, uh, the, the bonding state corresponds to this uh, uh, so, so this uh, occupied state corresponds to this bonding states on the triple bond. However, in case uh, due to the swapped 
Now, in the case of pentacene, uh, remember, you have an anti-bonding state here, which is occupied. So this also explains somehow the change of or the, the, weak, uh, the weakening process on, on the stable bond, okay? And other thing important is that in terms, it also explains this change of topology because you change the, uh, the parity of the wave function here. So when you calculate it, then the ZAC phase, actually you will, you will change the, 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 the last ZAC number of, of, this, of this bond. Uh, which is calculated here, and that also explains change of parity. Okay, so with that, uh, I mean, I would like to make bridge now to what is called this quantum phase transition. So, so that's basically a very active field in solid state physics, where the people they, they look at the phase transition, which is not driven by uh, entropy or, or driven by, by temperature, but basically it it, uh, it is uh, a consequence of some change of internal parameter of the Hamiltonian, which uh, doesn't change the, the eigenvolume spectra, but basically a certain increase, you will see again this crossing level orbital, so very similar to what, what the people in chemistry know, and, and, and then you can, you can drive the system from one, let's say, internal quantum order to the other one. And, and it's very, very interesting uh, problem these days, because it's uh, very important probably for understanding these highly correlated systems and ITC, et cetera. So from this perspective, I think that these polymers, they, they present very interesting material to be studied because basically there, uh, you know, we, we don't need to deal with this, this uh, strongly correlated systems here. Basically, this DFT kind of uh, is, is working at least on these two quantum states matters, you know, on, on these two topological states. So, so basically what, what we want to show now, and because I show you that there is a, some phase transition, but there are still some questions, okay? So can we, can we control it much better in much better precision? Because so far what we have been doing is that we had a, either a mole, a scene which was an anthracene or pentacene. So we have like stepwise function. You cannot go really to very close to the, or go through continuously through the phase transition because it, it basically in, in this set setup, you have either anthracene or, or pentacene. The other thing is, so far, I haven't discussed what is behind of this swap of these two orbitals. So what is the driving mechanism, okay? And finally, I will touch a little, very shortly also, is, is it possible to, to look at in these systems if what is called this quantum critical region? So it means when you start to increase the temperature and the quantum fluctuation and thermal fluctuation, they are on the same energy scale that is basically what the people call quantum critical region and very, very mysterious state of matter. Okay, so for that, basically, what, what, what we're going to do is we now going to grow very long extended uh, fantasy chains, and we will use on purpose uh, hydrogenation by, by, by atomic hydrogen. So basically, what is nice about that is that what you will find is that there is very selective uh, absorption of two hydrogens on, on each uh, on each. Um, on pentacene unit, you know? So basically this is driven somehow to the fact that the system likes this and it's, it's very nice because it's very, very selective. But what is more interesting is that actually then afterwards you can come up with your tip and at certain bias voltage, basically you can, you can uh, selectively uh, dehydrogenate these two hydrogens at the same time. So the system, there is, a, there is an increase of bias and at one moment, you will see that there is a jump in current, and instead, you, you selectively remove on, on this pentacene unit two hydrogen. So basically, you can somehow recover uh, back this, uh, this pentacene uh, unit without or pentacene polymers without, uh, without, um, without these hydrogens. So you can go to, to original ones, which we have been studying. And this you can do very selectively, so basically, you can do almost by to one. So you can start to build up within these hydrogenated polymers, you can start to build up the regions of polymers uh, with certain lengths. So you can really go step one by one. And, and what is interesting, so now what you can do is you can, you can shave uh, the certain part of, of this polymer here, and you can make it of different lengths. So I have a, here two polymers, which basically differ by, by number of units, which are there. And, so what you can find is that then the advantage is that now you can measure the same polymer with the same tip and you can see uh, directly that there is a, there is very interesting stuff coming up. If you have a short polymer, you see that basically in low bias STM, you see no signal. 
and uh, you recover, uh, you can measure also conduction and balance band. But on the other hand, if I go some extended chain, at one moment, I start to see emergence of this edge state. And also what I can appreciate is that I see, and in, 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 in the same time, I can see that what has been the balance band now in this, in this short chains becomes uh, conduction bands in, in this long chains and vice versa. So I can see uh, directly this, this kind of uh, energy level cross. Okay, and then uh, what you can do is you can really collect uh, uh, the band gap here, uh, the measurements of band gap for each unit. Uh, I have to say that we can also do it on, on purpose. On the other hand, that, uh, that basically when you change uh, the growth or so temperature, how long you grow, how long you apply this annealing, you can also grow selectively short and long change and you can count them. So that the statistic, which is here, actually comes from both appro approaches to look at uh, on the sur on surface to the short chains, or you can do just use this hydrogen engineering to to really uh, define different lengths of, of your polymer. And indeed, again, it, nicely you can see the swap of the orbitals. You can also in AFM appreciate this disappearance of of the triple signature here with this, this the increasing length. Uh, but now the question is, what is behind? So we have seen that basically in this pentacene polymer, we can go continuously step by step very, very carefully through the phase transition, okay? So I can, uh, going back, I can see that basically the band gap is normalized. In one moment, I start to uh, see this edge state and that's the evidence I'm, I'm in, a, in topologically non-trivial states. So now the question is, what is behind of this, you know? So one possibility would be, okay, we say uh, we can grow this, we can calculate this change, this extended chain, this time binding model, and use basically some, some let's say, hard tree for calculation or, or some, let's say, cast calculation, uh, including this uh, correlation more precisely. But what you will find is that increasing the chain, the length in, of this time binding polymer, you will not see any transition in terms of the length. So if I do calculation for the delta C, and I start to grow longer and longer, and I will apply this hard three fold or what do people call like mean field Hubbard, or I, I can do, do something more precise, which will be discussed calculation. I will never see this kind of change uh, of, of, of the system. So basically, electron electron interaction is not responsible for that. But so the other thing, what, what can be, we can have a look in that it's a, it's so called pseudo Young Taylor mechanism. So it means it's something similar, very similar to or more generalized than the pyrals because pyrals is strictly for one dimensional. But if you don't go to the two dimensional, basically the pseudo Young Taylor is more general theory. And what is yeah, pseudo Young Taylor uh, theory is saying is that basically if I have a ground state, so that's basically imagine that this is some some fictitious uh, coordinate reaction coordinates, for example, the bond plane. And, and, and for, well, for certain uh, states, I will reach the ground state. So it means this is the energy of, the, of this ground state potential surface. And if I, of course, distort the system from the equilibrium position, I, I will see something in, the, as a harmonic, uh, in a harmonic approximation, I will see the parabola. But on top of that, what, we, what I can also have, I will have a first excited state, okay, somehow. And this first excited state is, is presented by this parabola. But because we are in the minimum, so if I calculate the second or a second uh, derivative of this, this always will be positive because if not, then, then I will be in inflection and this will be unstable. But now if I do like perturbation theory and I want to also see uh, uh, that what is the connection between, let's say, this ground state and first excited state through some, let's say, vibronic coupling, so it means some virtual deformation, which is, defini uh, which is defined as, as this argument. So it means that I couple the ground state with some, let's say, vibronic coupling. So it means the formation of Hamiltonian with respect to the certain vibrational mode, characteristic vibrational mode, how this affect this, this, uh, this excited potential. And this is divided in the second order perturbation theory by, by, the, by the difference between these two potential energy surfaces. But this could be demonstrated that basically this is by default always negative. So this is the term which basically, if the vibronic coupling is strong, this will destabilize my, my system, okay? And now let's have a look what happened if, if I take like two level models. So I have a two level models where I have this ground state, which is approximated by this parabola, then I have a band gap, which is delta difference between these two guys. And now what I start to see if I introduce this coupling, so if the coupling is zero, I have just the generated states in parabola here, zero. 
But now what I can do if I start to introduce this coupling, which not always will be applied because I need certain symmetry of orbitals and 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 the uh, and uh, orbitals and the vibrational mode. In one moment, if this orbital, if this vibratory coupling start to be stronger and stronger, so in one moment you see that I will get some perturbation and the new minima will be formed. So it means that the system is it's unstable and under, undergoes the undergoes the transition, what is called like phonon softening, and I will reach the new new minima. And of course, if I will have a band gap smaller and smaller, this will diverge, and of course, the, this this will start to be stronger and stronger. So people claim that basically this is in Sergei and Teller, this is the the main driving mechanism. The the let's say the system avoids to be in degenerated state. Okay. Uh, but if you look at in, in our case, so we measure this, this band gap, uh, uh, or this homologmo distance uh, as a function of the monomers, and we know exactly where this transition happens. If you look at this, you will find out that actually this, this, this delta becomes constant close to the phase transition. So it means that uh, this already reached some level and, and it will not longer contribute to that. So it means that uh, the band gap itself cannot be responsible for this first phase transition. Okay. So it has to be this vibronic coupling, which, which somehow plays important role itself. So now to understand these calculations, and we will now start to grow again. We can do like this calculation for standing uh, polymer on or something. And, and then now what you will see is how the band structure is developing and what is the character of the band structure. So here, this is the number of monomers, and I'm only looking. What I'm plotting here are eigenvalues from BFT. So what I and, and I plot only the region close to the Fermi level. So it means the region of valence band and conduction band, which at the end, in in this in this uh, in this let's say infinite uh, model, it will form this this conduction and valence band structure. You know? so you see that basically here, this picture shows you how this band structure is 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 constructed when you get polymer longer and longer. But what, moreover, let's have a look on the dimer. OK, so this is probably the simplest one. So this is the dimer. And now I see that uh, uh, close to the band structure, I have a two, two states, OK, which are in occupied states. And importantly, what you will find is that one of them is has a character of anti-bonding here, and other one has a character bonding. And similarly, uh, what you have here is that you you have, you see the same uh, in a, in this unoccupied state, but now the lumo is has a anti bonding states and this one has a bonding states. And now when I start to increase, and so here what I this color bar means that red means it has a character of, of bonding and and blue means anti bonding. And you see that basically after this phase transition, which here in BFT takes place around eleven monomers. Uh, that also depends on the function that a DFT functional. I have to say in, in the experiment, we observe something about like 25 units of the transition. But this basically show some deficiency of, of DFT in terms of single electron, uh, single electron theory. Uh, but importantly, is here you can get some, some idea is that basically what you find is after the transition, we have a swap of the orbital. So now we have a band which are exclusively formed with the same. Uh, symmetry. On the other hand, if I'm topologically non-trivial, I see that these two uh, basically bands, or they, I have the lowest or, or highest occupied and lowest unoccupied, they have a different different uh, symmetry in, in, in terms of, of this bridge position. So now if you start to look at this, uh, this matrix, we want to calculate the vibronic couplings and uh, between for this for this diamond. And and what we found is that that basically you have very very you have very promote a very significant uh, mode which is the stretching mode on on the triple mode. So indeed you, you can see that you have a one vibrational mode of all this unit which is basically stretching this 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 mode this this bond. And of course when you see about this kind of like weakening of of this of this triple mode, we think this is probably the one very important mode which which plays the role in this game. And indeed, when we calculate this this vibronic coupling here, uh, so basically you you connect uh, this always this of the same symmetry. So I'm connecting homo with lumo plus one of the same symmetry, okay? And uh, and, I, and the the bond, so this uh, psi zero is is homo and psi and is lumo plus one, and then uh, the the vibronic coupling 
is, is evaluated with respect to this, this kind of stretching point. And what you will find is that, that of course, is allowed also uh, by, by the symmetry is that I have a two orbitals of the same symmetry. And then basically here is also kind of like a symmetric orbital. So we see that this kind of hydronic coupling is active, okay? But only is active for the orbitals of the same symmetry. So for example, for transition homo lumo, this one is goes to zero. You see, it's almost negligible. So it means that I need to connect, I mean, the vibronic coupling between, uh, between homo and lumo, because always I need to compare the uh, uh, consider pairs between occupied and occupied. They have to have the same symmetry. Yeah. And I can do the same for, for the five units. So for, uh, for, the, for the unit of five, and again, I can identify these bonding, anti bonding characters here. So if you look to this triple bond, so for example, this is fully bonding because I have a, a always bonding character here. This is bonding. But here I start to see kind of unbonding, uh, anti-bonding signature right here. So with that, now again, I can see that, for example, this mode with this mode will not be active, but this mode, for example, with this mode, they will start to be active. But now the important thing is that now with increasing the length, what I'm increasing is number of orbitals which are active. So you will never get the vibronic coupling, vibronic contribution from these frontiers of uh, uh, states. But from those guys, okay, and I'm, I'm start to increase the number. So what I'm increasing is number of, of the states of, of the same of the same uh, of the same uh, symmetry. And what is also important, what I will get is if I go, for example, for two, I will have just one stretching mode. But now if I go five, I will I will go four stretching modes of which we start to also form this this band. So it means now if I want to calculate the whole coupling. I, I, I'm, I'm increasing, I'm adding more and more terms just by enlarging the system. And once I will get the critical system, the critical value here, so you see how this total uh, vibronic coupling, which assume over all possible states and over vibrational modes, basically I can see that the continuously I'm increasing this vibronic coupling and in one moment, basically this transition of course. Okay, so it means the important thing here, or the message is that if I have a button bands or mindful of, of states which they have a different symmetry, but uh, they can connect with the same symmetry, maybe this this uh, the system what he wants to do is basically make to be stable. He wants to make these two valence and conduction bands of the same symmetry and avoid this stabilization. Okay, so now very very very. Uh, very short notice on this quantum criticality. So the quantum criticality, as I said, if I'm the quantum critical region, so when I go from uh, in, the, in this quantum phase transition from one side to the other, if you are very close and now we also start to increase the uh, temperature, you will get to something what is called quantum critical region. And this is kind of competing mechanism between quantum fluctuation and thermal fluctuation. And people, they, they, they really think that there, there is some, some mystery here. And, and, and so we would like to say, we would like to look at these polymers. And unfortunately, this is done only theoretically here, you know, just smoking gun, that maybe this could be also interesting to look at it in transport in some, let's say, temperature uh, domain. So now what you do is we take this uh, polymer of 15 units and we now increase the temperature to 100 Kelvin. And what you can start to see is actually there is a continuous fluctuation of this dimer, of this polymer going from one, one phase to the other phase. Okay, and this, this is manifested also here that I plot the series, so it's a time of picoseconds. So you see that basically you, you always uh, you develop this edge state, which are black, so they will be more like this one. And then I have, let's say, bonding, anti-bonding, which are swapping continuously all the time. So here, uh, there, is a, there is a movie, which is actually showing you this one, one oscillation cycle. And what is interesting, at least in the calculations, is that basically you develop completely new vibrational states close to this quantum phase transition when you do proper length and, and, and the temperature, and you start to see some oscillation, which basically is periodic in time. Okay. So it will never, well, at least in, in, in this DFT calculation or PMM calculation, basically, it will not diminish by time. It's kind of like robust and constant and propagated all the way, all the way time. So you see that the system is fluctuating from, from the topologically trivial to topologically non-trivial, and there's kind of like linear combination of balls on, on the average. Okay, so that's that's the summary of my first part. 
Oops, I'm a little bit long, but okay. So just very briefly, I think that this topological phase transition can show me, uh, basically I can tune by purpose, I can tune the band gap. And uh, I, what you can see is also that in this particular case, uh, this, this transition is driven by this pseudo young color or by the coupling, if you want. Okay, so now uh, I think I can make it. So let's let's go to this uh, concerted proton tunneling. So very briefly, I mean, now we will change a little bit the topics and, and we will look at we will look at the polymers which are made of hydrogen bonds, and we want to study basically if the, this hydrogen uh, this proton tunneling may play some role. And it's already known that proton tunneling may uh, has a large impact, for example, on on the phase diagram of the water under pressure. So without that, we are not able to understand properly the, the, the structure. Uh, that's also people have been shown in, in, in STM community that there is the kind of like a, a proton tunneling, which may play a role. But if this is typical like proton tunneling, it's still on the question. So anyway, here I'm going to look at these kind of molecules. Uh, these are very simple molecules, but, but very interesting, which has been provided by Oliver Silly from France, from Marseille, the chemist. And, and the, what is interesting about this molecule is that if you look at this, uh, that they have a two isomers. So either hydrogen is, is on this side or, or the other side. But importantly, when I change uh, this, this isomeration, I have also have to change the, 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 the structure of the resonance structure. So it means, for example, if I have some carboxylic acid, uh, which has been studied there, basically the problem is that you have a maybe proton tunneling, but this doesn't affect the core of, of your aromatic structure. Here is different. Always when I have a, a switch of the hydrogen or, or the proton tunneling of the hydrogen, this will require the change of, of, the, of the P resonance and as well the concerted motion of the other one to don't make kind of uh, a system unhappy. Okay, so with that, oops, somehow doesn't work. Okay, with that, we deposit these molecules on the surface. So these are made by Alesh Sadik and, and Jay Heller and Alesh. And we found very interesting stuff. So that these molecules, they on, on the gold surface, they form these very long extended hydrogen, uh, very straight chains. Okay. And you see that basically they do not respect the herring bond, they, they go separate. And then we have many of defective ones which with high resolution imaging you can recognize and comparing this with this, uh, this theory, you can uh, recognize that there, is, there are like defective molecules which have, which have an extra hydrogen. So these molecules, the problem is that they are a little bit unstable. But in principle, if you do the position right, you can get these very beautiful uh, st straight chains. What is, what is even more interesting is that now you can take the dip and you can move these chains and you will not destroy them. You will, they will not be disentangled. So this is an example, for example, to move the chains here, then you can move it back, you can twist it, and that, that's the high resolution imaging. And, and, and that's, that was very surprising for us. And maybe one would argue that this hydrogen bonded uh, system would not survive this. So, and then to just another notice, uh, we, we had a certain hemispherios and, and we, when we slightly changed the deposition of, of these molecules, we went to the other scenario where you have seen this, these molecules were no, no longer striped, but they have been some, somehow, uh, you call them counting. You know? they, 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 and, and of course, now you start to see that they do care about the herring bone. They somehow start to avoid it. And moreover, if these kind of chains, if you want to manipulate it, you will see they will no longer be so mechanically stable. So we try to move this, this molecule here, this chain here, and you see we just got a fragment of it. You know, and that it, it is the same here. So basically, there is there is a huge difference between in mechanical response to these chains, and also I would like to note this, and I will go to that in a minute. You see that also there are some edge state and there are some bright spots here on these stride chains. However, we we, we are lack of them on on these uh, on these uh, other chains. So one may yeah. thought that probably what what we have been doing here is we form some metal organic chains, or we form also some let's say uh, nitrogen nitrogen chains. So first thing is indeed sometimes we see these very short strain chains, and probably uh, the gold it could be in, in forming these organometallic chains, but these are very very rare. Uh, also, yeah, sorry, Pavel. Uh, yeah. five roughly five minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think I will be fine. Uh, 
So then basically also the molecule, the, the system is uh, incommensurated. And one more thing, when we look at this uh, XPS spectra, we still see like signature of two nitrogen tube groups, which will not be existing here. So now how to understand, we, we went to something which is called pass integral molecular dynamics, where basically we feel that maybe the problem is that the, the, there is some reinforcements of this bond because of this delocalization of the proton tunnel. So what you do here is instead to treat ions uh, Classically, you, you come with this kind of polymer ring and, and you simulate everything, uh, including, let's say, this uh, quantum nuclear effects or a proton as a, as, a, as, a, as a quantum particle. And this is the result. So basically, this is the barrier calculated this DFT for, for this concerted proton transfer, which was done by Jesus Mendieta, where basically you transfer from one side to the other. And importantly, here we, we have a, this is the monomer, or this is the unit, this is the chain of made of three units. And what you find is that in case of DFT, there is a significant barrier like 3 EV to, to move the, the protons around, okay? And it's pro concerted proton. Now, when we start to do this pass integral molecular dynamics in low temperature, what you will find, start to see is that this uh, potentially start to devi deviate. And there will be like dip here in the middle. So it means this is the signature of this pro deep proton tunneling. So the protons start to be localized strongly inside of the barrier. And moreover, which is also important, is that basically now with this correlation function, so we look at what is the correlation function to find the hydrogen here or here. So you find that there is a strong correlation. So it means if the hydrogen is here, 99%, the other hydrogen will be here. And it's a lesson. So this correlation, a strong correlation, is demonstration that once the protons they move, they have to move all at the same time. Okay. And, and one more thing is now when we do these DFT calculations with, with let's say, without this, uh, this pass integral method, we found actually that the molecules a little bit tilted because we are we are locked in one of the position. And, and, and let's say the simulation fit very nicely to what is that are these counted chains. And on the, on the other hand, when we have a stride chains, uh, we can again see this kind of symmetrization of, of this high resolution imaging. So with that, we, we, we think that this is kind of uh, uh, argument for, for that, that, that basically is proton tunneling motion is, is, is may occur. One more thing, I told you that in these stride chains, we have also presence of this edge state, and this is very prominent at, at the end. We can attribute it, there is no any, let's say, chemical defect which would explain this. So, so with that, uh, unfortunately, in, in this pass integral molecular dynamics, you cannot look in, in this, this, let's say, a little bit different concept of calculation. Uh, so this electronic structure, it will, that may be something which we need to be developed a little bit further. But in principle, we can have a simple model, uh, which was done by Diego Solar, where basically we take the Hamiltonian of the molecule and we start to look at the strength in between these two units. So we, we assume that basically this promoted proton transfer somehow also facilitates this kind of uh, connection of electronic structure. And indeed, when we start to increase the hopping term between these two units from 0.3 to 1 EV, you start to uh, see that you, uh, you start to uh, observe this emergence of, of this edge state. I, I want to say that this, these are not topological states. We calculate the zap phase for this, and, and that's not, that's not uh, the top, topological state. OK, so that's, that's it. I would like, uh, I, I hope that I convince you somehow that basically this, this molecules where proton transfer is connected with this P-conjugation, they can offer some interesting physics. So probably this uh, proton transfer is coupled strongly with electronic structure. And this may uh, reinforce somehow uh, the communication across, across the chain. And also this non-nuclear non, non, uh, quantum effects maybe are not so weak as one can uh, consider in these systems. And with that, I would like to thank uh, many people because, of course, this was a collaborative work. As I mentioned already, David Esika and uh, Nazario Martin uh, for, for this collaboration on, on, uh, on, um, on the first part. I would like to also uh, thank a lot Bruno de la Torre, Ana Sanchez, uh, Benjamin Maria Mayada, and I forgot Hector uh, Gonzalez, who was a very important part of, of, of the story uh, in, in the in this uh, hydrogenation, the hydrogenation, and on the theory side, Jesus Mendieta, Diego Soler, and, and Shayan for the calculation. And thank you very much for your attention. Sorry to be late a little bit. No problem. Thanks a lot for bringing that up.
So maybe some questions. Okay, while, while others are thinking, maybe I can start. So I was wondering about these this, um, topological end states or interface states. What, what happens if you have electron electron correlations or yeah. interactions? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So we, we, we stood here a little bit short and we had a lot, of, a lot of discussion about, and I explicitly said, when I do this calculation, there was a spin non uh, spin non polarized calculation okay because and then i can start to see these edge states which are basically zero energy edge states in the in the in the moment so what what you can what you can find is actually what we see here is not edge state itself on this this zero, uh, this zero bias but i think it's a condo which comes from from the from this X state, which, which in principle, because it's very localized, so it will split and there will be bonding, anti bonding state, will be fully occupied one electron and there will be this, this state underneath. Then now you can ask me, okay, what is the evidence for that? So, uh, first evidence is that when you do spin polarized calculation and introduce a little bit of correlation like hybrids, you will immediately see that, that you will get this kind of splitting here. The other thing is, uh then you should also measure like magnetic uh, response of this i mean you or also have been trying to do that i can advance that we succeed to to prove somehow not in this system but maybe we can repeat it we, we somehow prove uh, that there is a magnetic origin using this nickel seed if i'm not going to, to talk about or i was not talking about that today but in principle you can use the nickel seed tip you pick it up on the surface you approach to this edge states in, in graphene nanoribbons and basically you will start to see approaching closely you will start to see that the spin excitation of nicolosine is renormalizing and this is and then of course you can also rationalize it with this spin spin interaction uh, in, 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 in good way so I mean yeah here the condo temperature is so high I think that this magnetic field and you know better than me that probably is very difficult to split it up. but with this nicolosine you can do it so again, I mean, if this will be considered as a final proof that these are magnetic condo state, not sure, but for me it's clear. Thanks. That's interesting. Could I ask um, the substrate? You probably said it in the beginning. Yeah, it is a gold. Uh, in both oh. cases, it was gold. And, and of course, uh, if you go to other surfaces, the reaction may go. A little bit in different ways. Uh, for example, in both cases, like on the first part and also the second part, but maybe there, I think David Essica, he was exploring more the reactions on, on other surfaces, but in principle there, the growth is a little bit, it depends also on the temperature, so it's, it's kind of, I think maybe David can answer this later. But in principle, gold is important. Uh, we, we try also, you know, now we have certain effort to transfer this to some uh, insulating surfaces, but of course there the problem is with uh, uh, what will be the reaction mechanism because this uh, Uman coupling require metallic substrate, or at least the adatons to, to, to steer this reaction. Do you imagine it could be possible on a superconducting surface? In, to principle, all these? in principle, I think so. Uh, the problem is, uh, well, I think it principally should be done, but uh, then you will have also residual bromines there. I don't know if this will affect somehow, you know, the superconductive bed. Uh -huh. Principle, of, yeah, well, if you will not try, you will, you will know. <laughs> Good. Thanks, and uh, great stuff. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, I, I think what we could do. So I, I don't see other burning questions, but Pavel, if you have a <clears throat> if you have a couple of minutes more, then what we could do is we could stop the official part, stop the recording, and then have some more questions if there are any. Uh, sure, sure, no problem. Yeah. So let's let's do that. So thanks a lot for the talk.